changing careers and your resume isn't getting interviews, I would bet my Dundee that your resume is missing a few critical components. So let's take a look at what is missing from your career change resume. When you're changing careers, just like with any other job search, the first page of your resume is prime resume real estate. And if you're not getting interviews for your career change, the first page of your resume is probably not telling the reader what career you're changing from, telling the reader what career you're changing to, transferring your transferable skills, and translating your accomplishments. So how do we fix this? Let's dissect the first page of a career change resume. If your career change resume is missing the critical components of telling the reader what career you're changing from, what career you're changing to, the solution can be found in the professional profile paragraph. At the top of your resume, after your name, resume title, and your contact information, there should be a short paragraph that serves as an introduction to the reader. You can think of it as the tiniest elevator pitch. I call this paragraph the professional profile paragraph. Some people call it a summary. Some people may also call it a branding statement. Whatever, the goal is the same. This section highlights what's unique about you and what unique value you can bring to the table when it comes to the job to which you're applying. So this Starter paragraph is the perfect place to tell the reader what career you're changing from and what career you're changing to. I want you to steal this fill in the blank framework that you can use for your opening sentence in your professional profile paragraph. So this sentence reads, old career slash job slash profession, now turned new career slash job slash profession, excited to do the main business need you'll be solving by integrating, leveraging, offering, providing, whatever, one or two of your top transferable skills that the employer wants from you. Yeah, I know that's a lot. I know there's a lot going on there. So let's look at a few examples. Sales professional now turned product manager, excited to enhance and evolve SaaS products by integrating customer insights from the field. Elementary school teacher turned edutech, Account manager excited to support customers in getting the most out of their e-learning software by leveraging hands-on knowledge of classroom dynamics. Developer transitioning into a career in pre-sales, looking forward to partnering with sales and customers by offering technical expertise and building service plans that enable customers to achieve business priorities. Or in the case of this video, will help Michael Scott write his resume so that he can make a career change from sales into an arts program manager role because he is a theatrical person and who could forget about threat level midnight. So Michael's opening sentence might read, former sales leader, now turned arts program manager, excited to drive program development and expansion by leveraging relationship management and business development expertise. Following this one line explanation about what career you're coming from and what career you're going to, you can add a couple more sentences in this opening paragraph that speak to your skills and strengths that are most desirable for your career change target role. Things like the type of leader you are, the type of service provider you are, the type of collaborator you are, and the like. This is the section where you can wrangle all the adjectives that you want to use to describe yourself. If your career change resume isn't properly transferring your transferable skills, this fix can be made in a couple of places. The first place I'm going to show you is a real pro resume writer strategy. I use the strategy where I really want to bring the reader's focus to the top transferable skills that the job seeker might have and that I know the recruiter and hiring manager want. So we're talking about the career highlight section. In previous videos, you may have seen me use the career highlight section to to help write a resume for someone who wanted to return to an old job. Whether changing to a totally new career or returning to an old one, this section can help us out. It's as versatile as a really good pair of black pants. This section nestles nicely under the professional profile paragraph. And usually I like to keep it to three or four bullets. We're going for the best stuff here. Each bullet will emphasize the best accomplishment that demonstrates your top transferable skills or a briefly summarized sentence that captures 
your history or track record of accomplishing great things, again, that demonstrate that top transferable type of skill. Imagine that the recruiter and hiring manager are reading this section exclusively to build their fantasy draft candidate team. And these are kind of like your stats. I can't believe I just used the sports analogy. Am I okay? So going back to Michael's example, if we think of his career in sales and where he's headed, which is developing arts programs, if we imagine a target job posting as a program manager for a theater training program, we can imagine that a few of the key skills that the recruiter or hiring manager wants Michael does have. These might include expertise in fine arts, leadership, and partnerships. Now we want to write some bullets around these top skills and bring in some examples from work or even some outside of work experience or education that demonstrate and drive home that you have these priority skills. The other place on your resume that you can transfer your transferable skills is your skills section. Now a thing about transferable skills that you may have heard me say in the past, I'm here to tell you all skills are transferable. No skills purely exist for only one employer to benefit from them. You've got customer service skills, transferable. Software development, transferable. Sales, transferable. Rocket thrust equation and analysis skills, transferable. What's important to know about your transferable skills is to have a clear idea of which ones you're going to highlight on your resume to market yourself towards your new target job. This is where job postings for your target job become very important. You need to comb through them, analyze them, and make sure that you are highlighting the skills and qualifications that you have that they want. Hey, that lady really knows what she's talking about. The part about the job posting being essential for plucking out from all of your transferable skills, the ones that you should be transferring to the particular job to which you're applying is essential. There's no point in transferring skills that aren't required or desired. So let's take a look at Michael's skill section on his resume. I've already reviewed a variety of theater program manager roles and plucked out skills that Michael could consider transferring. When you're doing this for yourself, go through the job posting and note down the skills that jump out to you as being required or desired. Eliminate any extra stuff like extra adjectives like excellent, good, exemplary, professional. Employers are inherently bad at writing job postings and leave in a lot of useless information. From the list of skills that you've noted down, ask yourself, do you have that skill? If so, this is a skill worthy of noting down in your skills section. You also want to make sure that any skill that you list in your skills section is backed up by accomplishments or work experience from your professional experience section. Which brings us to, next we land on the professional experience or work experience section of your resume. If your career change resume isn't properly translating your work experience and accomplishments, then this is probably one other good reason why you're not getting interviews for your career change target job. You want your resume to act a bit like a GPS, particularly the work experience section. You want it to take the reader on the most unobstructed path connecting the job that you're changing from to the job you're changing to. And not the type of GPS that takes you through all the construction and dead end roads. The thing is with our resumes, once we make the reader do work, then we lose them. So how do we go about this? This is where the 5R framework that you may have heard me mention in previous videos comes into play. The 5R framework really helps us reapproach. there's another R, our accomplishments so that we can reshape them so that those accomplishments are demonstrating our skills for our career change target job. So what are the five R's? The five R's are to reframe our accomplishments so that they are relevant to our career change target job, so that they relate to our career change target job, so they reinforce the skills required and desired of us in our career change target job, and they resonate with our potential future employers. So here we've got the professional experience section of Michael's resume. Now, historically, Michael was writing a sales focused resume. Now that he's transitioning to an arts program manager role, we really need to take another approach at his work experience and describing his duties as well as his accomplishments so that it 
is again more relevant and relates more towards his career change job. So if we take a look at what his resume showed before, we see a lot of language around growth strategies, sales strategies, um, leading teams, as well as relationships with partners. Then when we get into the accomplishments, we see that he grew reservation sales, he led a fairly large team, he launched a product into retail store, he introduced other rentals and other forms of revenue, which are all very sales heavy. But if we think about each of these accomplishments, there is a way that we can help the reader understand that these accomplishments, although sales specific, are demonstrating transferable skills that we noted above. So let's take a look at how we might reapproach describing Michael's most recent job in this case, so that we can really help him demonstrate that he has the transferable skills desired and required of him in the arts program manager role. So as you can see with our reapproach of Michael's most recent role, we really changed things up. So we still talk about growth, but we de-emphasize the word sales, as you can see where we describe his role. We emphasize more the relationships and the partnerships because that's important, as well as the outreach, that's important to his target role. Then what we did is we actually separated his accomplishments into two categories, these categories being particularly important in terms of the priority skills required in his target job. So we went with program management and partnership highlights and leadership and training highlights, both very important to where he's headed. Then we were able to really reframe some of his accomplishments so that they really demonstrated his transferable skills. So earlier, this bullet was just about sales and the growth. But what we did is we expanded on it and allowed the reader to understand how it was program initiatives that contributed to this growth number. Then we talk more so about the partnership that he built with Vance Hand Heaters rather than just the revenue stream that it created. And then we also talk about his partnership with Burlington Coat Factory. As we get into his leadership and training section, we talk about Still his leadership, that's a highly transferable skill. We didn't really need to change that in any way. And then we also helped the reader understand how he produced new programs that were training related that just happened to create more revenue, but were really a win when it came to the program management, program development, and training aspect of the skills that are required and desired of him in his target career change job. The thing with career change resumes is yes, if you aren't getting interviews, then your resume is probably missing the critical components that we just talked about. But these components, if you struggle with writing them, these can also reveal that you may have a bit of a qualification gap in order to make the career change that you want to make, but that's okay. All you need to do is make sure you identify exactly what that gap is and then work towards filling it.